you know this morning uh, i have a message uh, from the lord uh, it's not a very exciting message you know sometimes when the lord speaks uh, sometimes you know god very often encourages you but sometimes you know he gives you a hard word uh, now uh, last week you know i was spending time in prayer and uh, i was in god's presence and when i was about to get up you know the lord said son sit down <laughs> and then he said you know there's lukewarmness in the body you know there's lukewarmness in the body you know uh, why do we get lukewarm why do we become cold why do our hearts become cold towards god you know in the book of revelation you know god spoke to a church called laodicea and he said you know either you be hot or you be cold but don't be lukewarm you know if you do that he said you know i will spit you out of my mouth now this morning uh you know before we go into the message you know i want to tell you you know this friday we are meeting for a half night prayer maybe we'll start at 9 o'clock and maybe we'll go on till 1 o'clock uh for a long time you know we are not prayed but we want to see god's face and wednesday evening also i want to have a zoom prayer where you know i want all of us to see god because i believe this is the time where the holy spirit is going to do something in your heart you know he's going to ignite you set your hearts on fire and do something you know that will cause you to have a passion for god passion for god you know this morning uh you know what is the most important thing in your christian life you know what is the number one thing the most important thing thing that is above everything else so i want to go to the scriptures i don't want to give you my opinion but what does god says you know if you turn to psalm 27 verse 4 you know david the old testament prophet king prophet songwriter you know what does he say you know see he says one thing have i asked of the lord that will i seek after that i may dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the lord and to inquire in his temple so david is what is it one thing what is the one thing that i'm asking what is the one thing that the lord is looking for david is saying i have asked the lord that i will seek after i will seek after god that i may dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life and why does he want to do that because he said because i want to gaze upon the beauty of god gaze upon the beauty of god what does the word gaze mean gaze mean you know you're captured by something you know you're caught up by something you're gazing that means you know it's not a glance it not it's not just a look but you're caught up with the beauty the majesty and the glory of god you know you know your heart runs after why because you have seen something of god you can never exhaust god in your life you know you can never say you know i have got to know all about god you know it's like climbing the everest you know somebody said you know you climb and get to one peak you know there's another stretch you know <laughs> knowing god is like that you know you come to one level you know god opens up something more you know it's beyond you know it, it's endless god is vast and here david is saying you know i want to gaze upon the beauty of the lord and look at you and enjoy god um now in the new testament you know the who are the great paul the apostle you know what does he say in philippians chapter 3 verse 13 what does paul say shall we turn to philippians chapter 3 verse 13 brothers i do not consider that i have made it my own but again he says but one thing i do 
one thing david said this one thing i seek after and paul is saying one thing i do this one thing what is the one thing turn to your neighbor and say one thing one thing <laughs> okay one thing what is the one thing that god is expecting you you know he says brothers i do not consider that i have made it my own but one thing i do forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead you know here actually in the crux of what paul said is i want to know him and the power of his resurrection i want to know him okay we looked at paul we looked at david so what does jesus say you know let's look one more scripture luke chapter 10 was 42 i think luke chapter 10 what did jesus look at mary and say what does it say shall we all read this scripture together but 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 one thing is necessary mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her and again here jesus is saying but one thing is necessary and mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her you know this one thing you know david said i seek after one thing one thing i have asked of you that will i seek that i may dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life and gaze upon the beauty of god paul said you know one thing what is i forget all what is past and i strain forward to one thing to know christ and the power of his resurrection and what did jesus tell mary only one thing is necessary now that means what the other things are not important of course there are other important things in my life in your life all of us we have important things but this one thing is above everything the most important thing you know today they talk about priority you know prioritize your life you know what is the most important thing in your life put a list prioritize this should be number 1 you know what does the word really prior mean priority means you know it comes from the word prior prior means before everything before everything this one thing is important the preeminent the supreme the most important the primary thing what is the one thing you know seeking after god longing for god hearing from god getting closer to god you know if you lose this in your life you know you are going towards lukewarmness you know your heart becomes lukewarm you become cold christianity become a religion you get into a cycle you know you get frustrated you get disappointed and all kinds of things begin to happen in your life why the preeminent thing the most important thing the number one thing is not there in your life you know today i want to just uh, uh, share this passage of scripture you know luke chapter 10 we look at this story um 38 to 42 you know the story of mary and martha uh, now as they went on their way luke chapter 10 verse 38 now as they went on their way jesus entered a village and a woman named martha welcomed him into a house and she had a sister called mary who sat at the lord's feet and listened to his teaching her then to help what is it um, and but martha was distracted with much serving and she went up to him and said lord do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone tell her then to help me but the lord answered her, martha martha you are anxious and troubled about many things but the next word, but one thing is necessary Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. Now Jesus comes to this village in Bethany where Mary and Martha a lot of bible scholars they believe you know this this is the first time is coming to Mary and Martha's house. 
you know, they invited her and they called Jesus Lord. Lord means probably she had got saved. She had accepted the Lord. And when Jesus came to the village, you know, as you know, Jesus, before going to village, he sent the 12 ahead. He sent the 70. Probably they heard the gospel. They gave their heart to the Lord. So when Jesus came, Mary and Martha, they invited Jesus into the house. And Mary, Martha was very excited. Why? The Lord is here. Jesus is here. And what happened, you know, those days, you know, when people come, you know, it's not like inviting you for one meal. Jesus said, when you go to a village, if somebody opens the door, stay there and do ministry, but keep that as your place where you stay and serve. So here Jesus comes. That means what? Martha has a lot of work. You know, she is to prepare the bed. Jesus is not the only person. He had the 12 with him. So she has to prepare the meals for the 12. She has to prepare the mat and bed and everything. And she has to uh, get the water ready. All kinds of things have to happen. And uh, Martha was very excited and she was very busy. You know, with all the arrangements, all what that has to happen. And here, what do you find in verse 38 and verse 39? And the sister was there. You know, she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. You know, Jesus was teaching and Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and she was listening. Now, I want you to understand that Mary here, she's not an apostle. She's not a minister. She's not a servant of God. Uh, neither, you know, she was very important in that society. In the, that society, you know, women were not supposed to come to the front, you know, sit at the feet of a rabbi and learn things. You know, they, they have to be somewhere, somewhere behind, you know, inside a room or something far away. But here, Mary was right at the feet of Jesus. You know, why? You know, her eyes were fixed upon him and she was looking at Jesus. She wanted to catch every word that was coming out of the mouth of Jesus. Why? She was hungry for what Jesus had to give her. And, and there was total focus. And she was right there, seated at the feet of God. So this morning, I want to tell you, sitting at the feet of God, it's not a special privilege only for pastors, you know, lay pastors, leaders and full-time workers. Every one of you, God expects you to be at his feet, seated at his feet, receiving what the Lord has for you. God has something special for you. God wants to speak to you. He wants to have fellowship with you. And he wants to ignite your heart. It is for everybody. Here, this is not, uh, Mary was not uh, some prominent apostle or some servant of God. She was an average woman. So this morning, the number one thing is, God expects you to sit at the feet of Jesus. You know, how do you measure lukewarmness? If somebody said, you know, how do I know I'm lukewarm? You know, people try to say so many things. But I'll tell you. You know, you know, for me to measure the spiritual temperature of a person, the only barometer is your prayer life. Your prayer life. You know, if uh, I'm not saying, you know, religiously just having a time of prayer, but, you know, dwelling in God's presence, sitting at the feet of Jesus, and enjoying the presence of God. Nobody's there. You, know, you, you shut in. You're alone. And you're seated there. And the Lord comes. And he meets with you. And he speaks with you. You know, if you don't understand that, go and you know, read the Song of Songs. It talks about uh, the love relationship between a lover and his uh, girlfriend, you know, how, you know, they're intimately having a conversation. You know, here, God is saying, you know, 
God is expecting you to come and sit at his feet and enjoy the presence of God. Now Mary was excited and she was at the feet of Jesus. But, uh, and God wants to talk to you. So this morning, you know, are you, my question to you is, are you lingering in God's presence? Are you enjoying the presence of God? You know, today I was happy, you know, Shalomi sang a wonderful song. You know, the beauty of God, the majesty of God. You know, how wonderful he is, how majestic he is. You know, he is the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley. He is the fairest of 10,000. And he is the epitome of beauty and majesty and glory. You know, have you seen the beauty of God? Have you seen the glory of God? Have you enjoyed and basked in the presence of God, not knowing, you know, even the time? Because you are caught up in God's presence. You know, this is what I mean. You know, you, uh, if, you, if you don't get this priority right, if you don't have this passion for the Lord, you know, we are going to become lukewarm. You know, our hearts are going to become cold. And, you know, we are going to uh, move far away. And then what happens, you know, we know the music, we know the words, we sing the songs. And in the book of Isaiah, God says, you know, with your lips you worship me. But what does it say? But your, in your hearts, you are far away from me. And he says, in another place, what does he say? As a husband, you have my name, but somebody else has your heart. I am your husband, but you have a lover. And it's not me. And this morning, you know, the Lord is calling life center church. You know, I don't care what this church becomes, but I want one thing. You know, the Lord must be number one in your life. Your heart must long for God. Your heart must thirst after God. You know, if that, is, that happens in your life, everything else will fall into place. Now look at this passage. You know, Jesus is uh, here staying in the house of Mary and Martha and he has started teaching and sharing. Uh, and then in verse 40, it says, Mary was at the feet of Jesus, but Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, Lord, you not, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. Now, you must understand what does it here? You know, the idea, the word here is actually, you know, Martha was distracted. What does the word distracted means? Martha was pulled away. Or she was Distracted means she was pulled away. She was taken away from the Lord, you know, by all the other things that she has to do. Distraction. Being pulled away. Being taken away. Okay, you sit there to speak the Lord, uh, talk to the Lord. And what happens, you know, uh, oh, sorry, my bulb is burning. Uh, you sit there and you begin to speak to the Lord and you want to spend time with God and then what happens, you know, this started, starts ringing. And then what happens, otherwise, you know, you get a noise, ting, ting, and some message, you know, what's up? You know, you are being pulled away by the what's up or somebody sends something on the Facebook and, you know, somebody gives a call and you are pulled away. You are distracted. You are taken away. You know, today, the amount of time that we spend in front of, you know, our laptops, our smartphones, and all the other things, and the time that we give for God is like, 
you know, we dropping a penny, you know, in the begging bowl of a beggar. You know, that's the amount of time that we give to God. Uh, you know, we, we spend more time. We have, you know, sometimes we say, you know, I don't have time for the Lord. But I want to tell you, yes, you don't have time for the Lord, but you have time for everything else. You know, that is the truth. You know, you have 24 hours. Break it into three, three segments of eight hours and put it right in how you're spending your time. You know, you can never stand before God on that day and say, I had no time for you. He will never accept that. Why? Because if you really want, if you really want God, if you really want his presence, if you want his friendship, fellowship, and divine counsel, and guidance, and walking with the Lord, if you are serious about God, you have time. You will give time. You will make time. I know if something is important to you, you will make time. You will cut the corners. You will do everything. And you will make the time. I know that. If you want to really watch the football World Cup final, I know you will make the time. But, you know, you know the sad thing, you know, one of the sad things about... Uh, about the church, you know, there was a church called Laodicea in the book of Revelation. One of the sad things, you know, I, I believe, you know, that's one of the sad verses in the Bible. What does the Lord say? In his own church, he's saying, I am standing at the door and knocking. And knocking. If anyone opens the door, I will come in and I will fellowship with that person. But this morning, you know, lukewarm, lukewarmness, what does it mean? You know, we leave the Lord out and we do everything. You know, here Martha is serving God. She's actually serving Jesus. She's serving Jesus. She was so excited and she was so caught up with the meal, the table, the mats and the water and everything. All that she has to do. She's being dragged, pulled away, distracted. And then what happens when you are not sitting at the feet of Jesus, when you are not keeping the main thing, the main thing, what is important in your life, the most important thing, when you are not doing that, what happens? It begins to affect your attitude also. You know, <laughs> she suddenly got so angry. You know, sometimes, you know, I'll tell you, you know, okay, forget about Jesus. You know, okay, if Benny, he knows somebody comes here teaching, or, you know, your home teaching, there's a crowd. You know, will you come to him and say, you know, now stop teaching? You know, don't you understand that I'm having all this work and my sister is not helping me? You know, how graceless, how rude you can be to the Lord. You know, here the Lord is the visitor. <laughs> He's seated there and she comes and what does it say? Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. She looks like a very bossy woman. <laughs> you know, tell her to help me. You know, God, don't you understand what's going on here? You're just teaching and doing everything. Can't you understand? Tell her to help me. You know, she interrupted the Lord. Normally, what will we do? We will quietly come, at least get behind Jesus and try to get the attention of Mary and say, come, come, come. There's work in the kitchen. You know, that's how we do. But here she barged in and she said, Lord, do you not care? My sister has left me alone to serve alone. Ask her to come and help me. You know, very, you know, you know, we get angry, we get annoyed, we get frustrated, we get disappointed. Why all these things happen? Because our heart is not at rest. Our heart is not resting. Why there's no rest? Why there's no restlessness? Of course, the Bible says, you know, the wicked, their heart is like a sea, always restless. 
but a believer you your you can rest in the lord god can give you rest how does that rest come only when you are seated at the feet of jesus even when you serve god you serve with rest in your heart you serve with rest in your heart and this morning you know i want to tell you you know what is the problem with mata is it wrong to be hospitable is it wrong to make a meal for jesus is it wrong to prepare and do everything uh, prepare the house is it wrong the bible exhorts about hospitality exhorts about caring for people doing good to people you know there's nothing wrong in hospitality but what is the problem with mata she got her priorities twisted now what is the most important thing you know jesus said mata look here i don't care what i eat i don't care where i sleep jesus said foxes have holes birds have nests but the son of man has no place to lay his head you know he slept on the boat he slept on under the tree he said i can sleep anywhere i am not worried about where i am going to sleep i am not worried about what i am going to eat i am not worried about the water i am worried about the word of god i am worried about delivering the message that god has given me i am worried about the spiritual you are worried about the physical i am worried about the heavenly food you are worried about the earthly food but jesus said only one thing is needed you know if you get anything this morning you know i want to tell you you know if this church were to move forward you know we can't be in a state of lukewarm you know this is what the lord told me you know there's lukewarmness in the body you know we are very you know god is going to revive your hearts hallelujah god is going to transform your hearts god is going to raise you up god is going to do something new set your heart on fire so that you will rise up and something you know in the bosom what did jeremiah said jeremiah said you know there's fire in my bones you know you have given me a difficult word i don't want to preach the word to my people but i can't contain it why there's fire in my bones and this morning you know god wants to set your heart on fire amen and and what did you know the last verse what did jesus tell you know though martha was rude and all that jesus was in her house he is the guest and but he was gracious he was gracious he understood martha is annoyed and angry and all that and he said but the lord answered her. and what did he say martha martha you are anxious and troubled about many things i tell you all of you this is not only for martha but for all of us <laughs> for all of us what is the lord saying you you are anxious and troubled about many things you are anxious and troubled about your family children company business uh, personal life some even you are anxious about your spiritual life all that everything anxiety worry pressure everything anxious and worried about many things but what is the answer go to the next verse go up but one thing is necessary only one thing you know i like simplicity don't you <laughs> something simple you know that day i there was a preacher you know i went uh, from america you know they they use the word kiss what does kiss mean keep it simple stupid <laughs> you know <laughs> keep it simple jesus said if something is simple i am happy very simple ji what did jesus say you were troubled and worried about many things but only one thing is necessary one thing i ask of you that will i seek one thing is necessary mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her mary has chosen the good portion 
and that will not be taken away from her you know jesus understood martha has got her priorities wrong mary has got her priorities right she is at the feet of jesus and he said she has chosen look at the verse carefully mary has chosen it's a choice what are you going to choose this morning the good portion which will not be taken away from her one day everything that you work for everything will be taken away from you anything you name it it will be taken away <laughs> except one thing your relationship with the lord you know you may be whatever you do everything will be taken away nothing is permanent in this world only one thing one thing what is the one thing your intimacy with the lord your relationship with the lord so don't get your priorities twisted now that is what the lord is telling you this morning don't get your priorities twisted what is the main thing what is the supreme thing what is the most important thing what is prior to everything else only one thing is necessary your intimacy with god give your all to god you know in the world out there they say don't put all the eggs into one basket but in the kingdom put all your eggs into one basket give everything to god make a total surrender you know pastor colton used to say i the be 100% for god totally sold out otherwise go out there drink womanize marry enjoy and have a good time but don't be in the middle don't be a lukewarm person you are going to be you are going to walk frustrated this life is going to be frustrated disappointed but you make a decision and say lord here am i one thing i want you you alone you know they some people say the fomo fomo is what fear of missing out you know if i give everything to god i'm going to miss out i'll tell you you will not miss out you will have more than what you can think or imagine so this morning what is my what is the message the lord is telling you you know seek the lord seek the lord you know that's why this week i said you know wednesday we'll have a zoom prayer or friday we are having a night prayer you know why you know this is not just a prayer for the sake of prayer but seek the face of god you know one thing i asked of you lord and that will i seek that i may dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life gazing at the beauty i am not saying you have to come here you can seek the lord wherever you are so commit this week really say lord i'll set my priorities right i want to seek your face and next sunday 9 o'clock combined service single time in english all together we are going to seek god we are going to repent before god there's only one way out of this what is the one way repentance what did jesus say to the laodicean church lukewarm but he said because i love you i rebuke you repent turn set your course right amen surrender give your everything open your heart to god open all the doors of your life nothing controlled by you say everything Lord I give my finances my phone my checkbook my children my family everything I lay at your feet take over surrender Lord rule and reign in my life I want to walk with you I want to know you and I want to experience your glory you know you will never regret I'll tell you one thing you will never regret making this decision you will have more than abundance you god will bless you you will have joy peace rest and god's wisdom god's counsel 
God will give you all that you need and he will bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you excited this morning? You know that the Lord loves you, but God is calling the church back to him. God is calling the church back to him. You know, we can't stay, you know, we can't walk in lukewarmness neither here nor there, but God is telling, you know, Lord, I am willing to surrender. So this morning, I want you to make a commitment and say, Lord, I am opening my heart to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, this week, I started a series last week on serving. I changed everything. You know, the Lord spoke to me and I was not planning to speak today. You know, I thought I would get someone to preach. But after the Lord spoke to me, I thought, no, this is from the heart of God. You have to, we have to make a turn. We have to change the course. We have to change the direction. And we have to move in the, we have to raise the sail and set the course in the direction of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you know, then, you know, God will begin to bless us. God will begin to move. Uh, God will begin to work in our midst. And we, are, we will experience the power of God. Hallelujah.